There are moments in life when we have una gotita de cianuro en la malteada. And that is Spanish for there is a little bit of cyanide in your milkshake. This is something that my father used to tell me all the time when he talked about morality. There's always a little bit of cyanide in that milkshake. And he, he would talk about it in the sense that you just, you have to be afraid of everything. I come from Bogota, Colombia, and it's a city that in the 80s and the 90s was full of violence, full of drugs. It was known as the kidnapping capital of the world. When you think of Colombia, you think of sexuality, sensuality, all these things. And my father was a Christian pastor. So you had to be afraid of every damn thing out there. It was just a paranoia. And that's the thing about having a little bit of cyanide in your milkshake. You, can, you can't taste it. You can't smell it. You enjoy your strawberry vanilla milkshake and bam, you're dead. So what does that create? That creates a paranoia. You're constantly like, oh my gosh, this is bad, this is good, dangerous. And if you have a context, the Christian context in your blood, you know that this is kind of the MO, the modus operandi. Anything could be bad. Anything could be dangerous. Anything could make you immoral. It's this constant state of paranoia. And so how can you live like that? You can't. You really, really, really can't. The first thing is that I found really hilarious about this metaphor was the fact that we can't drink milkshakes in my family because we're lactose intolerant, like 51% of all Latin Americans. We can't drink milkshakes, so the whole metaphor doesn't make sense. Who cares if there's poison in the milkshake? We can't drink it. We get gassy and farty and bloated. It's all excess. This is my family. We are all are lactose intolerant. So when you come home to my family in Colombia, it's not just my parents and my sister, it's also grandma talks about she has a colic and uh, your cousin talks about he has diarrhea and everybody, you could tell the whole story of my family through our digestive tracts. And as a documentary filmmaker, I've wanted to do a documentary about our digestive tracts, what it tells about our family. So my first guilty pleasure, of all guilty pleasure, which it says on my name tag is mozzarella. God damn it, I love mozzarella. <laughs> so much so, so much so that when I was younger, and this became a habit when I was working later on, I would walk the streets, I would go get groceries, and I would go in and I would buy a block of mozzarella, like a brick, and before getting home, I would eat it as fast as I could, like, like a chipmunk on steroids. But seriously, like, da, 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 like in less than five minutes, I could eat a brick like that big. And of course, I would like stealthily walk back home, I would be like, I'm cool, I'm cool. But of course, it was no secret, because the mozzarella would destroy my stomach, and it smelled putrid, and I was in agony, and everybody's like, why, the, why, would you, why would you eat mozzarella? And so this was my great guilty pleasure. So now that we've had that very uncomfortable conversation about the guilty pleasure of mozzarella, we're going to talk about the second guilty pleasure, which is porn. <laughs> Porn, lots and lots of porn, because when you're young and you want relationships and intimacy, you just like, you know what, give it to me all, give, give everything to me, every kink, every fetish, I want it all. <laughs> you want everything. And the thing is, you know porn, and I know you do, I know you do. Porn gives you everything. But for a moment of academic uh, knowledge, Roland Barthes, the sociologist, used to talk about the difference between porn and, and eroticism. Eroticism is the light, t gentle suggestion towards desire. Porn, on the other hand, is the heavy dose. It gives you everything, all the rawness, and at the same time, it gives you nothing. Porn is milk for me. Because porn, if you think that the message of my talk is that porn is bad, you're wrong. Porn can be great. I know you guys. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is that porn, when your body can't, doesn't have capacity for it, is excess. It leaves you bloated. It leaves you gassy and farty. And in a world, and this is where I get to me being a documentary filmmaker and somebody who does media trainings, we live in a world in which we are oversaturated with media consumption. Has having more media and more information made us more wise and more capable of making better decisions? Obviously not. Obviously not. So what do I want to suggest? I want to suggest that we go back to you are what you eat. How come we don't think about that when it comes to media consumption? How come we don't think you are what you consume? You are at the rate at which you consume. We don't think about that. So what, in our world of anxiety and in our world of fast pace, of being oversaturated and overstimulated, we go back to mindfulness. The mindful consumption of things, the mindful consumption of images. To understand that we have the capacity to digest and to know things and to use things in a certain kind of way instead of just being on our Facebook feed with fake news all the time and just being like, oh, completely 
helpless to act or do anything. My first story was about my father. My last story is about my father. My father, even though we have ideological differences, is a person of hope and somebody that I hope to emulate until the day I die. And this story has to do with the tattoo that I have on my arm. And it says, and I'm going to say it in Spanish because it sounds really sexy, Creo en los cafés, en el diálogo. Creo en la dignidad de la persona, en la libertad. Siento nostalgia, casi ansiedad de un infinito, pero humano, a nuestra medida. And it means, I believe in cafés, I believe in dialogue. I believe in the dignity of the human being, in freedom. I feel nostalgia, almost anxiety before the infinite, but more human, more to our measure. And that quote comes from a book called La Resistencia, The Resistance, by a guy named Ernesto Sabato, who when he turned 80, some, he decided he was going to write a manifesto for what it meant to recapture our life-affirming values, which meant to believe in cafes, to be together like we are right now, to practice hospitality, to practice hosting. So these small acts of resistance for me are, and I think you read this in my bio, the school of slow media. We practice what we call slow media. We practice the idea that it's not that, that hope isn't in stopping consuming. We can't stop consuming in the same way we can't stop eating. But that we eat and consume mindfully. That we consume carefully, slowly. And that by doing that in a community, that we recapture hope in that, in that way. And the final point is that sometimes when we deem that we don't have the capacity to digest, we stop consuming at all. Thank you.